Hello, welcome back. So now we're going to look at cross modulation. Cross modulation is when you have a pair of oscillators and you use one oscillator to affect the other. We're going to look at three different types FM, frequency modulation, AM, amplitude modulation, sometimes known as ring modulation, and thirdly, oscillator sync. We'll start off by looking at um, FM as it's commonly found on analog or subtractive style VST synths, which is just a basic FM. And we're going to look at how to use it to create gnarly, aggressive lead sounds, which is sometimes exactly what's needed to make your track kick, let's face it. So here we go. So frequency modulation, what does it mean? OK, so we know what a frequency is. Here's an example of a frequency. And we know what modulation is. Modulation means to move. So to move that frequency of this oscillator here, let's go down here to LFO1. And as you can see in the modulation matrix here, I've set it up so that LFO1 modulates oscillator 2's pitch. Now if I play a note and then I move this up you can hear it's modulating the pitch. Let's have a look at LFO1 so you can see that it's a triangle wave if you're not already feeling C6 it's a triangle wave which is modulating the pitch of this oscillator too. Here's the speed of LFO1 which is modulating the pitch of oscillator 2. Okay so not rocket science there but that is frequency modulation. Sounds more like a kind of a cheesy vibrato at the moment. Also, if we change the waveform that's modulating the pitch, that's a sign. And that's a saw wave. Square. So that's frequency modulation. In this case, it's done by a low frequency oscillator, an LFO. Now, if we move the modulation over to this oscillator, which reaches into the audio range, let's turn this off. And we'll turn this one on and switch it to FM here frequency modulation. Now in Albino oscillator 1 will modulate oscillator 2 if you have that switch on and correspondingly 3 and 4 also have the same relationship but we'll just use 1 and 2. And now the volume is the amount so it's exactly the same as the LFO we change the waveform to a sawtooth. Now the difference is we can have the oscillator rather than the LFO, the oscillator can track the keyboard. So if we turn track on, the frequency of the oscillator will go up and down to match the keys. So rather than having a fixed relationship with the modulated note, it will have a relationship based upon which key is being played. The amount of, os of FM up. Now we're getting somewhere. As always, a bit of distortion helps, especially with FM sounds. Let's try it with a triangle.
with a high pass. So as you can hear, we're getting really rather aggressive and nasty. And as we move up the keyboard, the relationship stays constant. Now if we turn track off, you can hear the difference. On. So that's the basic gist of FM. It's best if your modulating oscillator is a couple of octaves below your carrier oscillator. In FM speak, this is called the modulator, and this one's called the carrier, because it carries the wave, and this is modulating the modulator. Of course, there are lots of different uh, possibilities available by choosing different waves. And if we put this spread business on. Notice how deliciously grungy that gets. Uh, we worth sampling a bit of that off and putting it in a sampler. Especially the bit there where it goes through. There. So that's how you do frequency modulation in Albino. And of course, there, there are hundreds of possibilities by choosing different waveforms and different octaves. Or even different intervals. Four, five semitones works well. Eight works and also 10. Anyway, the world's your lobster. So that's the idea of FM. Now let's have a look at how it's implemented in Zebra. There are at least four ways to do FM that I can think of in Zebra. Just as an example, here's something I set up earlier, which is just using an LFO. The LFOs go into the audio range, which is patched to oscillator one's frequency here. So we get this sound with that. And I've set the LFO to track the keyboard. As you can see, LFO two is modulating the pitch of oscillator one. Now if we change the Waveform. Um, so you can hear how that works. A much easier way though in Zebra is to use one of the purpose-built FM modules. So you just kind of click here. FMO stands for Frequency Modulation Oscillator. There's four of them. Just put that one in there. So we're going to use Oscillator 1 as our modulator and 2 or FMO1 here as our carrier. And so this is what it sounds like. And then you just turn up the amount of FM, select FM by input here, which is default, and then you just turn it up. And there you go. Instant Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So turn the drive up here. And because the signal path in Zebra is stereo all the way, you can even do stereo FM. So how you do that is you choose dual oscillator there and make this a stereo oscillator here. And then set your width accordingly. And a bit of detune, just a tad. And then, of course, whichever oscillator you choose here uh, will be 
the modulating oscillator so you can choose let me see uh, or um, So that's that type of FM in Zebra. Now let's have a quick look at Vanguard. Vanguard's only got a rudimentary and very basic type of FM. In fact, it doesn't really do FM per se. There's just a couple of ways that you could kind of get it. If you choose an oscillator that has FM behind it, like sine FM here, or FM pulse, um, you can do a very basic kind of FM. So if you choose this one, and then this uh, PWM pulse width modulation becomes uh, the amount of FM. So that's your basic sine-ish oscillator. We turn this up. Uh, and then we can turn this speed up. Not very exciting. But it can be used quite effectively. If you just need that kind of gnarly sound, you can just use that. Plenty of distortion. And a little bit of and turn the retrig on for the uh, LFO. So it starts the same each time. Y you could get away with that. <laughs> I have. A couple of things about uh, Vanguard while I'm on the subject. It's a great little plugin, and it does some things very well, but some things it doesn't do very well at all and are best avoided. One of the things it doesn't do very well are things other than the basic waveforms so if you have if you're using your square and your saw and all that kind of stuff on a kind of virtual analog style just using filters down at the bottom end of the keyboard it sounds great it can sound really really good but if you're using it at the top end of the keyboard and you're using these different waveforms such as let's just, let's just take this one as an example uh, turn that one off. There's lots of aliasing up the top end of the keyboard in the higher notes. Despite this alias-free oscillators switch, which I've switched on, it aliases very, very badly on the top end of this keyboard. So it's best to restrict it to what it's good at, which is virtual analog stuff at the low end of the keyboard. So that's frequency modulation.